Um, we've heard a lot um, uh, just now in the, in the last talk about generations, and we're going to stay uh, with the theme of generations now, really. Um, Talent Bites is all about giving fresh perspectives. Uh, and I think the fresh perspective that we want to, uh, to, to give at the end of today's talk is that as we move forward um, from, from here, that increasingly an, in an increasingly large percentage of your future talent of tomorrow um, can and should potentially come from not people who are starting out on their first career, uh, but people who are about to embark on their second career. Um, and we're talking specifically about recruiting older workers. And you can see from my first slide here, um, hopefully things will come back to life. I could ad lib for 20 minutes, but I'm hoping against hope that I won't have to. So what we're going to say, uh, and if you, if, you, if you envisage here on the left hand side of the screen a picture of uh, Justin Bieber, and you envisage here, on the right hand of the side of the screen, a, a picture of Denzel Washington. Uh, we might argue that it seems um, when we could be discussing uh, the subjects as weighty as the, the burgeoning problem of student debt, we could be discussing uh, the, the crisis of, of youth unemployment. Um, the question we're asking ourselves today is, is younger always necessarily better? Um, and the answer that I hope to give over the next few minutes is to say no. Um, that there are a number of very significant and pressing um, demographic, um, organisational and sociological reasons um, why we need to be considering hiring older workers as part of our future talent strategies. Um, and I will treat you now with some slides. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Right. So there's Denzel and Justin. And we're saying um, we, we, uh, older uh, is not, uh, uh, younger is not necessarily better. If we consider re recareering, what we generally mean by recareering, we're generally thinking about people who are coming um, to the end of their career, who's been very successful, um, who might have been moderately successful, like Bill here, uh, made a few pounds, and are now thinking, well, what I want to do now is something that is more worthwhile. Um, or we may think of recareering as, uh, as a step, a transitionary step, something that we're doing to transition ourselves into retirement, or maybe uh, it's something that we would do to supplement our, our retirement income. And the perspective we want to give today is to take a new view of recareering and to look at recareering as something that involves uh, people um, in, their, uh, in their 50s and beyond who are willing to learn entirely new skills, to completely retrain, uh, to take on a new career. And that could be driven um, by the need to do something worthwhile or to do something more altruistic. But we think increasingly, um, as we are living longer, as we all hear, we're not making adequate pension provisions that will increasingly be driven by a need to work for longer and a want, potentially, to do more than one career in what will be a longer working career. Now, that comes with challenges. That comes with challenges to individuals, and it comes with challenges to organisations. Uh, from an individual perspective, as we just alluded to, it means to, t to be willing to retrain. It means to be willing, like Rex here, um, to recognise that you're old, uh, uh, an older dog and need to learn s s some new tricks. For, from an organisational perspective, it means a willingness to provide training environments that are culturally appropriate for, 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 for older workers. Um, and it means a willingness to ask people different questions. It means a willingness not just to say, well, what was your last job? What were you doing? But what skills, uh, what strengths um, are, are you going to bring to, to, to our, to our organisation? And we would say that these are challenges, but they're <coughs> challenges that we need to overcome, both as organisations and as individuals, um, because of a vari variety of, uh, of, of reasons, not least demographic. And now what I don't want to do is burden you with lots and lots of stats today. So just two slides of stats, but those ones are relatively important. The fastest combined falling age group uh, be, uh, uh, under 24. Um, uh, it, you know, the 20 to 24 age group will fall by 10%. 15 to 90 year olds are falling by 6% up to 20, uh, 2021. Um, the fastest growing age group is the over 55s. And then we look at the challenge of a huge amount of jobs that need to be filled in the UK over the next 10, ten years are simply not going to be uh, filled by people who are coming out of UK schools and colleges. 
If we then think, well, potentially we can uh, fill those jobs to uh, immigration, that's going to be a challenge as well. Net immigration at the moment stands at about 180,000, and we know the government's desire is to drive that down to closer to 100,000, as the government talk about immigration in the tens rather than the hundreds of thousands. So there's a demographic reason why we need potentially um, to, to, to offer more opportunities at future talent stage to older workers, but there are significant benefits organisationally as well. If we think about an ageing society, there's a huge value uh, for organisations we know in making sure that the diversity of our workforce matches the diversity of our customer base. Domestic in general talk, I think, not, very, not, not at all surprisingly, about their customers being much preferring uh, that domestic in general offer, amongst other things, uh, insurance on white goods. Their customers would far prefer uh, to engage with somebody who has at the very least owned a washing machine or a fridge in the past, as opposed to somebody uh, who's still living at home with, with, with mum. So there's, there's something to be said for having a workforce that mirrors our, 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 customer, our customer base. And of course, um, older workers come with a significant skill set, a huge amount of real world experience, enhanced decision making skills, greater confidence and potential initiative. Now some organisations that do re re recruit significant numbers of older workers also talk about the fact that some of them may be slightly slower uh, in fulfilling certain tasks. But that's more than made up for in the fact that their enhanced decision making skills mean they make far fewer mistakes. So in, in terms of working efficiency, they, older workers work more efficiently than their, their younger counterparts. We think there's a significant second life mentality that comes with recruiting older workers. And we'll come back to the, the data on this later, but in terms of the enthusiasm that comes with starting a second job later in life, potentially the gratitude to their new employer manifests itself in increased commitment, uh, less likely to leave uh, early, uh, and, 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 and lower uh, ab absence and, and, and sickness rates. There's a significant, uh, uh, it's, it's probably true to say that a, a cadre of older workers are potentially not going to become our next cohort of leaders um, with, with, within the business, but it, it, what they are very likely to become is a group of people who can mentor. And much of the points that Andy's been making earlier, a group of older workers can be the mentors uh, to the younger workers who are going to become uh, the, the, the leaders of the, of the business in the future. We talk a lot um, today uh, about the importance of networks, the importance of our personal and professional networks. And again, as we recruit older workers, they're coming with established uh, personal and professional networks. The, ne the professional networks potentially helping us with recruitment from a referral perspective. The personal networks giving them that support network that can be so key at the early stage of career that sometimes younger workers um, can, can lack. Um, there, we'll come back to the, 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 the issue of, 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 of attrition uh, again later. But again, you would kind of expect uh, one, of the, one of the things that may cause people to, sort of, uh, to, to fight against recruiting older workers is, well, will they be with the organisation as long? Older workers uh, see organisations uh, enjoy much lower attrition rates. They will stay longer. Uh, B&Q uh, in stores where they have a significant number of older workers uh, point to attrition, attrition rates of 60% lower uh, as, as compared to their other stores. So fairly unsurprisingly, when we combine all of these factors together, we see organisations that have a significant number of older colleagues employing in, uh, demonstrating enhanced performance um, than, their, than their, their competitors. McDonald's points to the fact that in stores where there's a significant number of 60 plus workers employed, there the performance will be up to 20% better than, uh, than, than other similar outlets. So, there are demographic reasons and there are organisational benefits. There's also a social perspective. Um, <coughs> we all know uh, that People of over 50 tend to find it harder to get a job. People of over 55 have to make more applications than anybody else in order to get an interview and ultimately a job. We're also aware of the fact that once we get to over 50, average salaries start to drop off. Now, there's lots of discussion with good reason about the challenge in our society of youth unemployment uh, and uh, creating a lost generation of under 24s. We also need to be quite conscious of the possibility of creating within society an alienated generation of the over 55s. So we have societal benefits, um, we have demographic need, um, we have organisational benefits, but there are significant barriers to re-careering to, to re, to re that I just would like to spend the last five, five or ten minutes discussing. 
Uh, and I think the, the, the first of those is the, the, the huge focus on youth that we have uh, in, uh, as a society. And I think fairly unsurprisingly, when you come to an event like this that's discussing future talent, naturally we will expect to be discussing um, school leavers, university leaders, Generation Z. But you do not have to look very hard to find advertising, and it's, uh, it's illegal um, to, to, to place adverts like this, um, uh, the, the, the ad for, for Lewisham, uh, looking for an ambitious young person. Um, I set myself the challenge of finding an ad that had, uh, I thought, relatively inappropriate uh, focus on youth and found the one for a phlebotomist. I put it in there because it's always nice to say phlebotomist. <laughs> uh, try it later. Would you like to work with a young, dynamic team? Okay, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. Uh, and it's surprising that you, it's, it's still possible to find uh, the, these examples. Government policy, Steve Webb, the pensions minister, says the organisation uh, that, that misses out on the talent pool of 50 plus uh, the, of the 50 plus labour market is, is is genuinely missing out. But we wonder whether government policy is sort of paying lip service um, to, uh, to, uh, to to recruiting older workers. In as much as if we all know if we were to recruit an apprentice of 18 years old, we'd be able to recruit a certain amount of their training costs. But there is no such benefit to recruiting uh, uh, w workers who are over 50. <laughs> We then have to question our, the own perceptions and the own value judgments we place on older workers. It's quite common to think um, about recruiting an, an, older, an older colleague. Will they be able to take the salary drop? Are they going to be comfortable working for uh, a, a younger manager? Um, are they going to be mobile? Will they be willing to move? And when we start to consider these kind of preconceptions we have, we maybe then need to ask ourselves, well, are we just living in an, an ageist society? And 60% 60, 60 of older workers would say that we are living in an ageist society. Interestingly, if we were to have a group of 50-plus workers here today, if we were to have 100 of them and we said to them, how many of you had training in the last um, uh, four weeks, only 18.1% would say that they had training in the last four weeks. If there was a group of 35 to 49-year-olds, then 38.7% of them would have had training in the last four weeks. Again, if we had a group of uh, under 30s, uh, the figure would be, would be lower than that. So it's not that there's training declines over age, it's the bulk of training is focused on 35 to 49-year-olds uh, and then falls off uh, once we get to, 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 uh, to over 50. There's a fairly fair, fair concern, is there not, that potentially if we're recruiting uh, older workers, then we may have more sickness. Uh, potentially they're going to take, take, take more days off. Uh, the Max Planck Institute uh, in Berlin uh, reports e exactly the opposite. Uh, workers over 65 are more reliable, more productive and more consistent than their 20-something count counterparts. And this is interesting in the context of the slide that, just, that Andy showed us where we see happiness considerably uplift, if you remember, over the age of 50. And again, the Max Planck Institute are suggesting this is because over 65s have higher motivation, they're more balanced, they have more balanced routines, um, and they have more stable moods. Fundamentally, uh, the data is true, over 50s are happier and they're therefore off sick less. We then question the issue of ROI. If we're recruiting people later in life, are they going to be in the organisation for long enough for us to really recoup that return on investment? And then we have to remember, well, the average attrition rate in the UK of graduates is something like 18 months, and 91% of millennials say that they will not be in their first job, uh, their next job, for more than three years. So the, the return on investment is simply not an argument against uh, recruiting older workers. We're certainly guilty of this. As an advertising agency, we are guilty of thinking, well, we need to have uh, digital natives in the business. We need to have people like this little guy here uh, who is always connected, always, always plugged in. But again, what we need to think about there is that it's not necessarily about being a digital native that counts. It's about having a digital mindset. And then, then we can do, our, do well to remind ourselves uh, that the uh, internet was invented by Tim Berners-Lee, who I think is 58 this year. So um, what would you say um, if somebody said to you, well, I can give you a recruitment strategy that can offer you people that um, will give you an improved rate of, of retention, of, of, of your new colleagues, lower rates of sickness and absence, improved, customer, improved customer relationships, a stronger work ethic, an ability to manage and cope with stress better than other colleagues, um, and ultimately reduced um, turnover, which I think is probably the same as improved retention. And I think we'd probably say, uh, yeah, that's quite a good idea. So uh, really this is uh, our, 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 our last uh, talent bite this morning is effectively a call to action. Um, to shout louder about the benefits of, of, of re-careering, 
Um, to share success stories within your own organisation, I think there's an opportunity for us to drive the supply side by sharing the success stories of people who've joined our organisations later in life and, and, and share those um, positive stories. We should challenge misconceptions. We should challenge misconceptions where we hear them and we should probably challenge our own uh, misconceptions that we potentially uh, make ourselves and here made within our organisations. In a couple of weeks' time, we'll be launching a new website, recareering.co.uk, and you'll be able to download a white paper written by... Uh, our strategy director, Graham Wright, um, which has formed the basis of, of this talk this morning, and also we'll invite you to participate in a re-careering survey uh, that we're putting together. Um, that's all from me. Thanks so much for listening. I think we're going to have some questions now. <laughs>